Hello, hello, friends. Welcome back to Alpha Beta Soup, where we unpack Bitcoin using on-chain analysis. I'm TXMC. We've had an eventful week. Can't say we haven't. We'll take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin. We'll look at the price chart. We'll check out the futures market and see what spending behavior looks like on-chain. If you enjoy this content, make sure to give my video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You're tuned into the best on-chain analysis community on YouTube, and I look forward to many more discussions in the future. What you're first looking at here on the screen is an article I published the other day studying on-chain spending behavior. If any of you are curious to learn more about the nuts and bolts of on-chain analysis, the processes we go through to develop a metric and test it, I highly recommend you check this article out. I spent a lot of time on it, and I think that you'll find it enlightening for anyone interested in learning more. I'll leave a link to this in the description below, and you can also find it on Twitter. But enough about that, let's talk about recent Bitcoin action. We'll kick things off as we usually do with the price chart. When we spoke on Monday, price was around 65k and we were inside this green candle here. We didn't yet know what price would hold for us, but I did say that I expected we would see a new all-time high within a few days. And we did get that. We got that on Monday, actually, just a few hours after the video. And then we set a couple of more highs over the next few days and we have since pulled back down to 64,000 or so. Yesterday was quite dramatic, yesterday, November 10th. And though the day ended only down 3%, there was a lot of drama and fervor on Twitter and people kind of freaking out. So let's talk about what happened there and what is going on in the market underneath. If we look at this on an hourly chart, here is that flush. So the previous all-time high was set on October 20th. That's this line right here. We did break that on Monday after the video came out, chopped around a bit, tested it as support, and then yesterday we got a huge flush over a series of hours that took us all the way down to 63,000. And we've bounced back up now and are ranging a bit. We've spoken before about how all-time high breakouts can be messy. They've been messy in the past. The old days of Bitcoin ripping straight past a previous high and not looking back, that might be in the rearview mirror. This market is much bigger now and it takes more capital to move the needle. So clean breakouts of the all-time high might not be realistic. If we look at the fractal from 2017, shown here on the daily chart, this was when in 2017 when price, this purple line, first broke the all-time high. It broke it, it pulled back, it got over it, there was a bounce, a couple of bounces, and it actually dipped quite significantly underneath the all-time high after setting it, which was quite scary for people in 2017. We didn't really know what was happening here, uh, but after a couple of weeks, it got back over, found support at the all-time high, and off it went into the blow-off top. This price action does not mirror this price action, but I do think it's pretty interesting that in both years, 2017 and here in 2021, we broke the all-time high, there was a pullback, got back over it, and then another pullback. So we have a bit of similarity, even though the price is not one-to-one. -one. You can see I put a couple of arrows here to kind of show these pullbacks. Here's one right here, and here's one right here. So it's, it's reasonable to expect we might have a bit more time before we finally get out of this range, worth keeping in mind over the next couple of weeks. So we've got this price uncertainty. We had this flush yesterday, but is this manifesting itself in any changes to our bull thesis on chain for Bitcoin? Well, let's answer those questions. Here we go. Here's our futures dashboard. At the top, we have open interest for the perpetual market. Perpetual market is the one with the funding rate that we see here on this green chart. And this is where we watch a lot of the leverage coming in and out of the system. Open interest is the value of all open positions in the futures market. Here, specifically the perpetual market. And what happened yesterday was a new all-time high in open interest was set in BTC and in USD terms for the perpetual futures market. The traditional expiring futures market, which is a bit larger, didn't set an all-time high, but it's very close. But we did get a new high in perpetuals. What we'll really look at here now is the funding rate. This is our old friend, Mr. Funding Rate. We've looked at this numerous times over the course of this channel. The funding rate represents leverage and bias in the system. When it's positive like this, when it's green, that means that we have an abundance of long positions open in futures. There is an excess of long bias. Those traders with long positions are paying a premium 
to have their positions open. The higher this funding rate goes, the more traders have opened long positions, the more leverage is leaning that direction, and the higher the premium to take part in those trades. It's a way of encouraging balance in the futures perpetual market. What we look for with funding are divergences, where funding is going up and price is going sideways or down. We got a bit of that. So from the 7th all the way through the 10th, price was creeping its way back up. Funding was creeping its way back up. It would go up, it would come down, it would go up, it would come down. But generally the trend was growing. And it was really yesterday on the 10th that funding reached kind of an apex. And when we saw a bit of weakness here, and it's hard to know exactly what catalyzed the move, whether it was a large ask in the spot market that caused a bit of selling that then triggered some liquidations in futures, whether it was futures itself getting a little imbalanced and starting a downward slide. Hard to say exactly, but what we can see that happened is that when price got weak here and started to fall from the 68Ks, funding began releasing as long positions were liquidated. See, this line here are people who bet on price to go higher, long traders. They were wrong and the exchanges closed their accounts automatically and you can see that happened as price was falling so this was someone who had a position open wanting price to go up maybe they were looking for 70k they didn't get it and somewhere in this fall they were shut out they were closed down and now we've seen funding reset all the way back down below 0.01% which is kind of its baseline level and maybe we'll see it dip into the negative which it has done at previous times this year we can see it is capable of being negative it can have a discount regime for a period of time, which would indicate an abundance of short positions, where a general expectation of price weakness is dominating the futures market. We're not quite there yet. Funding is still positive, but it's in a neutral state of positive. So it's pretty obvious to me that a long liquidation and the futures market generally played a role in the sell-off yesterday. What will help us to confirm if this is true is whether we're seeing spending activity changing, profit taking, etc. So we'll look at those as well. Okay, so now we're looking at our spending dashboard. This will help us to confirm whether the activity we are seeing over here in the futures market with these flushes is manifesting itself in any kind of spending. So the main chart we will look at is net realized P&L. And this is the dollar profit and loss outcome of all spent transactions each day. The behavior we look for on this chart is for tests of this cost basis line in bull markets. This black line going across here represents break even. Even. You can see, look, this is our sell-off in May. And once we got down into down below 40 and we had this kind of sideways action in the summer, you can see on the PL chart, look at this period of red here and how price went sideways and the PL of the transactions on chain stayed in the red for a long time. But whenever they would get back to their cost basis, they would get rejected again. And this is really showing you the aggregate sentiment of all the people holding Bitcoin that are active in the market. We have long periods where everyone is in profit, high levels of profit taking. We come back down, we test our cost basis. Buyers step in because it's a bull market. There's exuberance and excitement. Price rallies and more profit taking goes into the rally. We bounce back down to our cost basis. It gets supported and pushed higher. You can see this happen over and over and over again in bull runs. Then once we break below it, once sentiment starts to change, the opposite happens. We stay red, losses being realized, people spending coins in a loss to to get out of the market. And when price gets back up to the cost basis, there is still an appetite for selling. The desire to exit has not been extinguished. We haven't satisfied all the sellers yet. They spend a few more coins and the value comes back down. And it stays like this for a while. And then we finally see here in July, there's a little spike of profitability. You see that spike? Once we got this spike right here, this started to show maybe sentiment was changing. This is the highest profit that had been realized in a month since May. We got one more test below our cost basis, one more little shakeout, and then off we went. And since that moment, net PL has been able to stay profitable. And it's tested this line a few times and bounced off of it with confidence. So the main takeaway for me now on this PL chart is that spending looks perfectly on par. We're not seeing some big spikes here like we did earlier this year when prices were actually lower than they are now. We were seeing higher realized profits. We're seeing lower realized profits and prices much higher. We're basically at the all-time high and realizing of profit is still very muted. This is bull market behavior. Staying in a level of profit, testing your cost basis and seeing buyers step in 
an unwillingness to spend coins in loss shows bull market behavior across all of Bitcoin. We're seeing some profit being realized. That's this green line right here. Some profit is being realized, but this value is oscillating. It goes up, it comes down, it goes up, it comes down. And we are setting higher lows on realized profit as price is going up. But if I zoom back out, this is still a bit muted compared to where it can be at its higher points. We're also seeing a small bit of loss being realized here. For these losses to be realized right at this moment, that means those are folks who bought this all-time high. They bought this range right here. It fell down and they're realizing losses around 65K. I mean, they are barely in the red and they're giving up. I can't relate to that kind of trader sentiment, but those folks exist. So my general assessment right now is that spending behavior is still bull market territory, earlier bull market territory. Unwillingness to realize losses, light profit taking, and a lot of uncertainty in the futures market itself, which is really where the volatility has been driven in the last two or three months. One last thing I want to look at now is the supply distribution of spent coins. These charts going across here are different cohorts of supply based on their age, which is how long the coins have been sitting dormant. We've got coins that are three to six months, six to 12 months, one to two years, and two to three years. And this represents a nice broad swath of our older coin volume. The top row, the individual counts of spending. And then down here, the bottom row is the volume of BTC within the spending above. And why I pulled this up was so that if we could see where spending might be occurring. We noted here that there's been a bit of re profit realization and it's been rising in the last few weeks, basically since the beginning of October. It is still in a healthy level, but there's been some profit realization, right? So where is that coming from? In the last few days, in this drop right here, we can see there's been a, a, a spike of activity of six to 12 month coins, spikes of spending. But if we look down here at the volume of this spending, it's very small. If you check out these axes, look this one line right here, this is a thousand Bitcoin. But we're looking at a few hundred Bitcoin here or there, maybe a thousand, very low volume numbers. And that's pretty consistent for all of these groups. You know, our three to six month group, there's a bit of outflow, small amounts of BTC. Six to 12 month coins, some spending, some activity here, but very low amounts of volume. Nothing to write home about. Our one to two year group, similar, a bit less than the six to 12 and almost no volume. Same thing over here on two to three years. You know, there's a little spike, 3000 coins got sold, you know, right before we went up to the all time high, but that's it. None of the hodlers have begun to spend here. What's causing these price dips, this price dip right here is the futures market. It's this, it's the funding going long into price weakness and we're getting some flush outs. The profit taking on chain is still on par with where it has been. It seems completely unshaken by what happens in futures. And we're kind of range bound in this area of profit taking here between, you know, one and two and a half billion dollars a day. But the actual volume coming out of these older coins is very small. Most of the traffic on chain remains very young coins, coins younger than three months. They still dominate the volume on chain every day. But this, this view of PL is what I want the key takeaway to be for this video today. And there's something else I want to touch on that is related to this price action. Inevitably, whenever we have these flushes, I see sentiment on Twitter from people who don't seem to understand the volatility inherent to a new technology. Bitcoin is a nascent technology. It's only 12 years, 13 years old, and its actual adoption by the world at large has not even begun yet. We are still in the very early stages of this technology and volatility, price jumping 10K and then falling 10K the next day is part and parcel of a growing asset that started from literally zero and is still very small. If these intraday dips of 3% or 5%, percent or even 10 percent make your stomach turn and they make you uncomfortable then it's possible your exposure to bitcoin is not aligned with your conviction about bitcoin and that can be addressed i don't think the answer is to lower your exposure necessarily that's a decision for you to make but where i can help is in strengthening your conviction about bitcoin so here's the way that i look at it 
I am not a Bitcoin trader. I do hold and trade some other coins on a shorter time frame that ultimately get converted into Bitcoin because I believe that Bitcoin is money. It is not one of these other tokens. It is the hardest money ever conceived by man. And it fixes a lot of the problems with the current fiat monetary regime that dominates the world. I believe that in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, the value of Bitcoin is virtually incalculable. And its importance to human freedom and protection from monetary debasement cannot be understated. Its importance to the world has not yet been understood broadly. And so my plan is to stack as much Bitcoin as humanly possible. If price were to fall 10%, I would be buying. And that approach may not work for everyone who's listening to my channel. There may be some day traders out there, some swing traders, some new investors who are just trying to get their feet wet. We have a large kaleidoscope of different market participants who all want to understand Bitcoin a bit better. As long as Bitcoin remains proof of work, where real life costs and energy expenditure must be used in order to produce new units. As long as Bitcoin remains deterministic in its issuance with halvings every four years and a deflationary issuance rate, as long as it contains a 21 million coin hard cap, all of those properties which make Bitcoin what it is and make it unique from these other tokens trying to be money that aren't, as long as it retains those properties, it's almost math mathematically certain to appreciate in value over a long period of time, over years, as capital inflows continue to rise, which we have barely even begun to see the volume of institutional inflows possible for this asset. Once those begin to happen, the ceiling of price could be anywhere. I mean, we're looking at 6.2% year-over-year inflation from the Fed in a manipulated basket of goods where they've taken out energy and other things in order to to create a 6.2% number. The real inflation number year over year right now is double digits, and it's only getting worse. Bitcoin has the exact opposite properties. It is a sound store of value, and its volatility does not diminish that truth. Volatility is short term, and if you're worried about price falling 10% because you're trying to sell next week for some profit, my perspective on Bitcoin may not align with your priorities, and that's totally fine, but I want to be transparent here. My goal on this channel is to deliver fair, reasonable assessment of the Bitcoin market, but also know that I am not trading it. I'm not looking for a high price to exit. I look for low prices as dip buying opportunities. Everything else for me related to this channel, to on-chain analysis, and to Bitcoin itself is about further deepening my understanding of the future of money and finance, which is what I believe this asset represents. I say all of this because I want you to understand that when we look at Bitcoin together, when we look at this on-chain data and we make an assessment about whether it's a bull market or a bear market, whether we expect price to go up or down, that is based on data and observations in the moment. Nothing that happens to the price of Bitcoin today or next week or next month will change anything about my conviction in its long-term success, in the issues that it addresses, and in its role in the future of society. All of those things are cemented because Bitcoin itself, its monetary policy, its operational thesis, those things are immutable and unchanging. And I can rely on them in the future to be exactly as they are now. This isn't a technology company where we're analyzing cash flows and future earnings potential and competition in the sector. Bitcoin does not have competition. It is the hardest money we have as humans. It is superior to gold. It is superior to all other forms of money. And that is the way you should look at it, as a savings mechanism, not as a trading mechanism for quick wealth. That is how I will be approaching the market, and that is the bias that my assessment of Bitcoin overall comes from, from a place of expecting it to be a future world currency and the greatest store of value that we have. Okay, that's my message for you today. I hope I didn't get too preachy. But when I talk about Bitcoin, I get very passionate. Sometimes I have a tendency to ramble. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at TXMC Trades. You can interact with me there and find a bunch of cool stuff that I don't fit into the videos. Make sure you leave any feedback or questions for me in the comments to this video, and I'll be sure to read them as I always do. We'll check back in here in a couple of days, maybe Sunday or Monday, and see what the market has been doing in the meantime. 
Until then, remember what I said about your conviction. And if you're feeling unsure, if you're feeling nervous, that's an opportunity to deepen your understanding and to approach that fear with knowledge. Until next time, take care of yourselves, friends. Cheers.